Hi there. Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 241. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. If you are watching the replay, put hashtag replay in the comments so I can say hi to my replay warriors. Welcome, welcome. I can't believe it's Wednesday. Tomorrow is the last day of school here. And I can't believe it's about to be summertime. I, I am looking forward to an extra hour of sleeping in, though, that's for sure. So welcome. Let me say hello to a few of you. Hi, Beth. Hi, Becky. Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. Hi, Cindy. Shirley. Penny. Linda. Becky. The Orange Dragonfly. Welcome. If any of you are new here, put hashtag new in the comments so we can say hello to you. Hi, Karen. Hi, Kathy, Elaine, Jenny. Always good to see you having fun playing with paper because I have fun playing with paper too. Welcome, welcome. We're going to be using the Abigail Rose Suite tonight. I love it, love it, love it. Um, it's just a gorgeous suite of, product, of products. So we're going to do that tonight. I've got actually two pretty easy projects for you tonight. And I've got show and tell from the kids. Let's see, what else can I tell you? We've got, I think it's less than a week of the In Color, I'm not In Color Club, my goodness. The In Color addition to the starter kit. So that is coming up, that's coming up um, ending on the 31st. As demonstrators, those of us who are demonstrators, we got to see the new upcoming July to December 2022 mini catalog and July to August celebration brochure. <gasps> You're gonna love it. I'm excited. So um, you'll you'll hear more information about that. We've got a last chance sale coming up on June 1st. Do I have my dates right? Yes, it's still May, June 1st. So there's a scoop there. Brian, are you ready for your cameo? <laughs> my husband Brian is here watching for your questions and comments. If you do have a question for me tonight, put Q colon in front of your question. That will make it into my Q when we do Q and A at the end of the live stream. I want to make sure I answer all your questions whether they're related to the project or about anything else. You guys love asking organizational questions and things like that. And I love answering them on the fly for you. So that's always fun for me. I look forward to that every live stream. Let's see what else. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of any of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. Oh, I see a hashtag new. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome. I hope I pronounced your name right. Welcome, welcome. And if you shop with me and use the current host code, you earn Pixie Perks with me. Every single order increment of $25 earns a Pixie Perks star. And if you earn 10 stars, you get to choose a free stamp set up to $27 in value. You can save your rewards and redeem two rewards for a free stamp and die bundle up to $54 if you like, or two stamp sets. You can mix and match there. Um, so you want to make sure that you use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto-magically add the host code to your order. Now, if your order is 150 or more, you can still use that link, but you want to make sure that you remove the host code on the shopping bag page. There's a little trash can next to the host code. Make sure you remove that if your order is 150 or more, because you're going to earn stamp rewards on orders of 150 or more. You will still earn Pixie Perk stars on those orders. And I'd love for you to take advantage of that. So let's see, what do we have next? We got show and tell from the kids. So Lily again is on her draw so cute um, obsession, which I love because I sh each one of her drawings, they just continue to get better and better. This is juice and crackers. I think that cracker is pretty darn good though. Troy the cracker. We've got poppy and sodi, so popcorn and soda, three peas in a pod. And bacon and eggs, Lady Crisp and Ella. She loves watching Draw So Cute. Wenny is um, an artist that teaches drawings for children. I love her channel. So the kids love watching that and they'll pause and get caught up and then press play again. Sometimes they rewind to go back. So it's always fun. And then Nolan wanted to share his uh, dragon drawing with you. Red dragon, blue clouds, yellow sun. So that's really fun. He's wrapping up his kindergarten year. So he's a rising first grader and Lily is a rising fourth grader. So that's their show and tell for tonight. Thank you, Brian. Let's go ahead and jump into tonight's projects. I'm going to actually, 
not give you a sneak peek. We're just gonna jump right into the pro projects now. We are gonna be doing a crumb cake card. I haven't used crumb cake in a while and I love it with the Abigail Ro Rose Sweet. So let me introduce you to that sweet. You can find it on pages 56 and 57 of the annual catalog. Let's get this open here. I just, I mean, the samples on this suite are absolutely beautiful, and I love the versatility and how many different ways you can play with the products in this suite. The coordinating colors, we've got petal pink, there's some soft succulent in there, early espresso, crumb cake, very vanilla, smoky slate, and basic black. I've had a lot of fun creating projects with this suite. The Cottage Rose Bundle, it comes, it's got some really cool things with the dyes, so let me show you that kind of up close here. Here are the dyes, cottage rows, flowers, dyes, and the stamp set. I love the sentiments here and the mixed fonts as well. You are positively the greatest. We're gonna use that sentiment today as well as happy birthday for a happy birthday card. And then the cottage flowers dyes do some really cool things. This piece here, I don't think, let me see if I can grab my designer series paper and show you something really cool with this large die. One thing I did wanna show you is it will also cut out this flower that's in the stamp set and this trio of flowers as well, if I can turn that the right way. Really cool that you've got this. You can use it for a window as well. But there's one piece of paper in here that as I was studying the catalog, I wanted to know how they did this card here. And we have got this pattern. Let's see if I can figure this out on the fly here. You can actually die cut this whole section of flowers in the paper. How cool is that? And I believe you can do in both directions. So if you do a window on the card, this is actually, you would just, if you were to cut a piece of cardstock with this die and you could just flip it over and you could have, just like on here, have that pattern show up on the card. I think it's so fantastic. So they are smart, those Stampin' Up! Those Stampin' Up! folks, aren't they? All right, so that's an introduction to that suite. Let's get that put away. We'll be bringing, I think we're using the dies. I don't even remember if we're using, I may not be using the dies. <laughs> Um, then we all, there's also the natural finish ribbon, which we're not using tonight, but I wanted to bring it out to show you. It's really thin ribbon. You can actually stamp on it. I don't know if you noticed that in the catalog here. Beautiful ribbon. It frays really nicely if you want to add some texture to your cards. The suite itself is $73.50. Comes with the Cottage Rose Bundle, the Abigail Rose Designer Series Paper, and then the natural finish ribbon. What green colors are used on page 56 at the bottom? Ooh, good question. Um, I think it's soft succulent, either pear pizzazz or old olive, I think, and maybe parakeet party. But I can check on the supplies list if you want to shoot me an email. Julie at thepaperpixie.com, I can double check that for you. Here's a quick sneak peek at the designer series paper. Just a really cool combination of colors and patterns. You can do some masculine cards with this as well. Love that petal pink striping there. We're gonna use this in one of our projects tonight. Beautiful, beautiful. So that is the Ab Abigail Rose Suite. Can I hand those to you? Thank you. I may need the catalog again if we've got questions. And then we've got our heart pearls. I'm gonna be using this on both projects tonight. And my new obsession, the mini pocket envelope dies. Gotta go upstairs? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this will do a mini pocket that is sized to fit a gift card, but I'm gonna show you a different way to use it tonight as well. We can make a little bow, so we're gonna have some fun with the mini pocket envelope dies as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the card first. I'm gonna start with a piece of crumb cake that measures four and a quarter by 11 inches. And we're gonna go ahead, well this is already scored in half at the five and a half inch mark. Okay, and this valley fold, or this valley score line, I'm gonna turn into a mountain fold. Fold and burnish for the card base. I've got a piece of basic white that measures four inches by five and a quarter inches. And then I've got a strip of the Abigail Rose Designer Series paper, and I need to measure this. It's four inches by three quarters of an inch. 
we're gonna just put that right along the inside panel. We're gonna decorate the inside of our card, which if you've watched me for a while, I rarely do. <laughs> oh good, I'm glad you like the tips on that large die. It's always fun to study our products and see what they can do and discover new and different things. So I'm just gonna, for a little bit of texture on the inside of the card, I'm just gluing that down towards the bottom. I don't know, it's about a half of an inch up from the bottom. You got a WB Brian from Phyllis, welcome back. Oop, I almost put that on the front of the card. Did you guys catch that? <laughs> this is why I can't watch the comments and craft at the same time. Oh, that would have been funny. But you know the trick to that? If I had done that, we could have just flipped this all the way around and you would have never known the difference. I saw somebody do that when I first uh, started working with Stampin' Up! products and it blew my mind. Like, oh, if you glue it on the inside or on the outside by accident, flip, up, flip around your folds. All right, I'm gonna bring that in. I've already realized I need to cut one more piece of paper. So we're gonna put this off to the side, the card base, and we're gonna focus on the card front. I'm gonna do some heat embossing here. Now, forgive me, I have been doing a lot of projects with the Abigail Rose Suite. So I already have some stuff set up in my Stamparatus. I figured, well, it's still there. We might as well still use it. So um, we're gonna use this same positioning for project number two as well. But you can see I try to use my grid paper until it's really messy and I can't see it anymore. I have marked a little left, lower left corner markings here on my grid paper because this is where we're going to stamp with Versamark ink because we're going to heat emboss in white. So guess what's coming back y'all? The embossing buddy. It's actually in the new catalog. I think I can tell you because we've seen it today. Um, demonstrators have been able to see it. It's an embossing buddy. The embossing tray you know where you could pour the powder over it and it's got the little funnel at the end to put it back in the container and I think a pair of reverse tweezers, which I am super excited about. So I'm gonna just bring in my trusty embossing buddy. This is 12 years old and is the only thing I ever purchased as a customer and the rest is history. So I'm gonna go ahead and then stamp this with Versamark ink. Now quick tip here, I'm gonna make a big old mess. I like to put one of my stamp sets or the stamp set I'm working with underneath the plate on the Stamparatus that just gives me a even stamping surface, a level stamping surface. That's what I was trying to come up with. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and stamp that. Just make sure we got good coverage there. It's a very detailed stamp, which I love. You can kind of see the outlines of that. Let's get this out of the way really quick. Actually put it right there. We're gonna make a little bit of noise here. Let me grab the white embossing powder. Probably gonna make a big old mess here. But as I always say, did you, act did you, uh, did you actually craft if there's no mess? So we've got the embossing powder sticking to the Versamark here. This was my first true love with paper crafting, heat embossing. I can already see I made a mess. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna clean that up. All right, so coming back here, I know some of you have found the paddles that are like this, but they're not painted white. This is just from a heat tool that I had. So I'm gonna come back here and heat. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do this on camera because I'm attached to the power cord. So one second. I need to get another power strip that I can fit my heat tool. It's a big detailed stamp, but I wanted to show you. Look at that. I love the magic that happens with heat embossing. So we're gonna come in and actually color that. But let me see that mess that I made here. 
If you don't have pets, you need to get one of these. It is just a lint remover, and that's gonna pick up all those fine uh, embossing powder details. It'll stick to the lint roller and come right up off your surface. Just gonna grab, I've got a quarter sheet of uh, grid paper here. I like to trim it down because I feel like it'll last longer, but we're gonna do some Stampin' Blends coloring here. And I'm gonna start with the Soft Succulent Light. Now, if you are seeing that I have this labeled, I do have Stampin' Blends labels available for sale. It is a digital download, the paperpixie.com slash blends, and it has all of our um, Stampin' Blends colors, both current and retired. So I'm gonna use the brush tip here, and we're actually gonna just come in and color right in the leaves here. This is such a cool, beautiful effect on the crumb cake with that white heat embossing. So we're just gonna relax here and do some coloring. And you don't have to worry about staying in the lines. But it's just gonna give us a really beautiful look on this crumb cake. All right, so just show you that up close. Look at that, love that. And then I'm gonna use both the dark and light petal pink. I'm gonna start with the dark, again, the brush tip. And I'm essentially going to, I'm seeing here that I didn't, let me see if I can heat emboss that really quick. Upstairs again. There we go. <laughs> I had a little piece there that had, didn't finish heat embossing. So I'm gonna stick with the dark blend to go where all those lines are right in the inside of the petal. Now this is gonna look weird when you first do it because the alcohol ink is still wet, but then as it dries, just wait until you see what it looks like. So again, I'm just kind of sticking to where those petals, the, the bottom part of the petals, if that makes sense. Starting with the dark petal pink. All right, and now that we've done that, you can see it's starting to dry here where we started. I'm gonna then come in with the light petal pink and then just fill in the whole petal here. Again, it's gonna look really dark and weird to start until the petals, or I should say the alcohol ink dries. Apparently I can't talk and color at the same time. <laughs> I'm like that when I'm driving too, aren't I? I can't really talk and drive at the same time either, or I shouldn't talk and drive. Brian's laughing at me. <laughs> now what's cool about the petal pink is it's gonna give a very subtle pink color, which I love on the crumb cake. All right, we're just gonna give that a little bit of time to dry. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna come in, put that off to the side. Petal pink. I forgot to cut this piece, or I did cut a few pieces, but they may have ended up in the trash. So I'm gonna do, let's see, I think I did three inches. And we're gonna uh, cut a few just so that, in case I make a mistake. So I'm just cutting these to half inch strips. I can never have too many. All right, let's do that. So for this, we're gonna do happy birthday and early espresso. And I'm gonna stamp it towards the center of this panel here. Put 
pardon my head. There we go. Yay, it worked the first time. I took a little bit of inspiration from the catalog. There was a happy birthday sentiment in there that had this diagonal cut and I loved the look of it. No, I'm good, thank you. So I'm just gonna cut it at an angle. And then here's a trick to get this angle going the same direction. I'm just taking that piece that I just cut off and I'm just gonna hold it there, dry, you know, just hold it there on the end and use that as a guide to cut this end at the same angle. Doesn't have to be perfect. Then we've got it looking like that, okay? Then I've got a two inch by three quarter inch piece of the Abigail Rose Designer Series paper that we're gonna pop that, just gonna adhere that to the back of our happy birthday sentiment using liquid glue. Love those stripes. And you do want to cut it in a way that the stripes are going vertical. I think that looks nice with that. Okay. All right. Now, now that that's dry, look at that very subtle pink petals. I love that so, so much. All right. So I think I forgot to tell you this piece measures three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. Got another piece of crumb cake. This measures three and three quarters by five. We're gonna adhere these two together for a tone on tone frame, which I am digging these days. Oh, that's a good question, Trina. I think Brian's gonna grab it and throw that in the chat for me with the Q colon. Can you do that? You see Trina's, thank you. Great question. All right, there we go. And then we're grabbing our card base that we made with the inside. Make sure that this is the front before you glue it down. Woo, good catch. <laughs> Butterfingers tonight. We're gonna layer that on the top. Now you could absolutely change the the middle layer if you wanted to do the petal pink or even basic white or soft succulent. I did notice with the soft succulent, this looks a little bit different in tone because we colored it on the crumb cake. So the crumb cake changes the color just a little bit. So there's that. Again, very subtle petal pink, but I love the way that looks. And just that sort of double layer of cardstock really takes those layers up a notch. Love the way that looks. So I'm just going to do a trio of dimensionals here. And then let's pop this off too. Let's see a little bit of the leaves there. Have that kind of hang over the layers just a little bit. Then I've got some linen thread. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a little bunny ears bow here. So two loop-de-loops, if I can get them to cooperate. I'm just gonna tie those in a knot. And then we can zhuzh our bow here till we get it the size we want it. Oh, you guys are sweet. Thank you. It is the highlight of my week. I love being here live with you guys. All right, so we've got that sweet little linen thread bow. And I'm going to grab a mini glue dot, but it's too big for our bow. So I'm going to take my take your pick tool. We're just going to do a little burrito roll here. So I'm literally burrito rolling this glue dot. So I get it to be kind of like a long skinny glue dot. I'm gonna pick up the knot. I'm gonna pop that down here to the lower left. And then, did I hand you the pearls? Oh, they're right here. I'm gonna grab one of these beautiful heart pearls. I'm pretty sure that's what these are called. I didn't label these yet. 
And we're just gonna do a tiny little cutie pie one and just pop that off too. Just one little piece of bling there to make that card extra sweet. So there is our Abigail Rose happy birthday card with the crumb cake base. Love the coloring of stamping blends directly on crumb cake with that white heat embossing. So this project, I believe, is gonna to post to my blog tomorrow. The next project will post to my blog on Friday and it's an easy one, so no template needed. Um, you're not gonna need an extra video tutorial for that, so those are posts tomorrow and Friday. Next, we're gonna, well, I'll bring that back at the end to show you the two projects together. So now we're gonna work with the mini pocket envelope dies that I am absolutely obsessed with. These are so, so cute and they make creating gift card pockets so quick and easy, but I'm gonna show you a little bit of a twist on it. We're gonna grab this piece, the large piece. Now this already does the die cutting and the scoring for you, so it's gonna make it very, very easy. We're gonna use this rectangle piece, which again, Stampin' Up! knocks it out of the park. It has the embossing on it as well. And I'm gonna show you how to make a paper bow and give you some tips and tricks for how to create that one. I didn't see a video from Stampin' Up! specifically on how to create the bow, so I'm just gonna show you kind of how I figured it out. And to maximize your paper, like literally to have minimal um, excess, you wanna start with a piece of designer series paper that measures four and a quarter by five. I'm gonna show you a little trick to get that lined up. So I've already cut this piece from Abigail Rose to four and a quarter by five. That means you can get six of these. Wait, one, two, three, four. I think it's four out of a sheet of 12 by 12. You are gonna have some excess as well. So I this is a directional pattern, so I have cut this where it is in landscape and bringing in my beloved magnetic cutting plate. As you can tell, it's very well loved and it's doing really, really well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down and I'm gonna line it up so that this edge, the right edge and the bottom edge are actually, you can kind of feel, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm sliding it left to right until the die stops this direction and until the die stops in the upward direction, okay? So the only excess we're gonna have here is the corner piece, this section, and this section, okay? Now, the magnetic cutting plate is gonna hold that into place without it moving, I love showing that. And to cut this, we only need plate one, plate five, which is the magnetic cutting plate, and then one plate three, okay? We'll run that through. bring it back. I'm going to do a little bit more cutting as well. Oh, I just clicked mouse buttons and hopefully everything is still good. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, click not mouse buttons, but um, my keyboard. All right, so there's the piece die cut. And again, we've got very minimal, look, it's hanging on by a thread here, but that's the only excess we have. Okay. that back in a moment all right so I'm gonna fold you can kind of see the score lines there so there's one of them turning that uh, valley fold into a or the valley score line into a mountain fold and then there's gonna be score lines right on these little teeny tiny tabs Oops. get that lined up right So no measurements, no um, scoring or anything or cutting. Obviously the cutting, the stamp a cut and emboss machine did for us. I'm gonna grab my silicone mat just in case I make an ooey gluey mess with my glue. I'm just gonna run a thin bead of liquid glue right along, get my glue bottle going here, right along these little tabs. Okay, real thin bead of glue. And then I can just fold this over. 
and I like to flip it and just use my bone folder and get that pressed down. And it makes the cutest gift card pocket. Let me show you what a gift card looks like in there. Like how easy was that? It's got the scalloped edging. I love that lower level um, pocket front. Grabbing a gift card here to show you. It's a perfect fit for a gift card. Look at that. So along those lines, I thought how cute would this be to make a little mini note card to put in here. It would be the cutest thing to give with a tip at the restaurant or the nail technician or the hairstylist to put a little gift enclosure in there. So let me show you how I'm gonna cut a whole piece of, this is thick, very vanilla, not basic white, thick, very vanilla. I'm going to cut it on the eight and a half inch side to four and a quarter. I'm just gonna show you if you wanna make multiples of these to have them ready to go to give out as random acts of kindness, which I love to do. So four and a quarter, we basically just cut that into two even pieces. I'm gonna slide this to two and one eighth, and then we're gonna score, not cut. I'm just gonna do both of these and show you how quick and easy it is to make a bunch of these. So then two and one eighth. And then this is up to you. You can either cut it to three and three eighths, which is gonna be the size of a gift card, or three and a half. I'm gonna just do the three and three eighths. So when this little card is folded and closed, it is the size of a gift card, okay? So I'm just gonna cut three and three eighths you're gonna end up with six little mini cards, just that little piece of excess. Again, just working my way down. I always love to create multiples while I've got all my gear out. Yes, I just saw that, Kathy. To put a note in your kid's lunch, great idea. All right, so we're just gonna take one of these and I'm gonna show you, it's the cutest little note card. Just gonna fold and burnish. And it actually works really well, either portrait or landscape, but this would be the way that I write in it. Now, those of you that have already redeemed some of your Pixie Perks rewards, you've got a little note card in your package on its way, so. Keep an eye out for that. Now, I did hide it in your stamp set, so look in the stamp case and you'll find it. <laughs> All right, so this one, oops, I'm doing the wrong thing here. I have two Stamparatuses, you guys, because I was working on a bunch of projects. So with this one, I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up. Now I've got this other marking here. Let me grab my magnet and you're going to wonder this is duct tape mermaid patterned duct tape but it's a great little handle for um, picking up the magnets because they're hard to get without a little handle and i'm just going to put that right there on the edge we're going to use early espresso ink now i purposely did the card first because we did the versamark and then now i can just put the early espresso right over the versamark don't have to clean my stamp so again, just early espresso. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that with the card folded. Just put a little bit of pressure and wait a few moments. Oh good, Beth, you received yours. All right, look at that. So quick and easy, but we're gonna take this up just a little notch. I'm gonna use a blender pen. I haven't used one of these in a really, really long time. And I'm gonna color this in a similar way that we colored with the Stampin' Blends on the card, but I'm just gonna stick right to the inside, or I should say that petal, the bottom part of the petal. I don't know if you can see what's happening, but we're basically just pulling the color and blending it around. And somehow, with early espresso, this starts to look a little bit pink, like our petal pink. So you can do as much or as little as you like, but I am just kind of coming in and going right over those little lines, doing exactly what its namesake is, a little bit of blending. It's 
doing some relaxing coloring tonight. I just saw that question. Do you have any business cards on you? I don't know if I have any handy. You know, it's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. So just a little bit of that color pulling, but isn't it crazy how, I think there's a little, obviously there's some red, reds or pinks or whatever in the early espresso, but pulling that color out gives that a really nice, and you've got actually a pretty good amount of space to write a little gift note enclosure there. All right, so we've got our pockets, we've got our little note card, okay? And that's gonna fit right in there. You could also do that in basic white as well. I chose to do very vanilla. And then I'm going to grab a scrap piece of petal pink. I'm thinking this through here. Um, let's actually let's do our stamping first. We're going to stamp and die cut and then do the bow. Actually, I don't even have to. I have my Stamparatus set up. So let me show you. I'll walk through and explain that to you. Um, but we're going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment on to... I'm all over the place tonight, aren't I? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut the rectangle first. Let's do that, okay. So we're just doing very vanilla. This is just the regular weight, very vanilla. And you can really maximize your space here, especially with that magnetic cutting plate. Just put it right next to it. Brian's off to find a business card. <laughs> I think they will fit for sure. But look at how beautiful that cutting and embossing is. Gives it that beautiful frame. And what I did ahead of time because I was making a bunch of these is I actually created a template here on the Stamparatus. So the way to do that, I typically start with just a quarter sheet of paper and I'll put it here in the upper right corner. And then I will just put my stamp set and then stamp it onto that quarter sheet of paper. I take that piece and usually what I will do is a little trick so that I know, especially with something that's rectangular, is I'll just put arrows to signify that this is the top. Because once I pull it off the stamp and cut and emboss machine, I'm not going to know necessarily which way it's set up. And then, so I would have die cut the first one that I stamped. And then I can just die cut a whole bunch of blanks like this. And because I already know where it's gonna stamp, and then that we're gonna cut it perfectly, or cut it in the perfect spot. Then I can just cut a bunch of blanks and go ahead and stamp happy, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do early espresso ink. And I'll oftentimes um, save templates. Sometimes it takes a little while to get the stamp set set up again. Um, but just kind of a fun thing for things that I do, like, like my team welcome cards and things, I've got templates that I hang on to. So there we go, it's gonna stamp exactly where we wanted it to. Early espresso onto very vanilla. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and die cut. <laughs> Bringing out the die cut machine a lot tonight. So here's my tip on the bow. And we had a similar thing, remember when we had the bow builder punch? There is a direction to your cardstock and you'll notice a difference. I'm gonna actually cut two of these to sort of show you. Um, now, not all of the eight and a half by 11 is cut in the same direction. So sometimes it's a little bit of a hit or miss guessing game, but we're gonna keep it either perpendicular or parallel to the grain. I'm, sometimes it's hard to tell by view, but you can usually tell when you start to work with the bow. Hopefully I'm making some sort of sense. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna cut two bows and I'll show you the difference between the two when we put it together. But this is a really fun little guy to work with. And who doesn't love a paper bow? Oh, good idea, Denise. Great for stamping multiples for swaps. 
All right, I'm also gonna cut it this way. I'm gonna pull these guys out actually. And once you figure it out, just make sure you remember. And again, each piece of eight and a half by 11 might be different with the way that the grain goes. So I can't say, oh, always cut it, you know, in line with the eight and a half inch by eight and a half inch side or the 11 inch side, because it could be different depending on how that cardstock went into the cutting machine. All right. Now I think we're done with the machine. Okay, so I've got both of my bows. Here's how we're gonna put this guy together. I'm gonna take my bone folder, and I've got uh, bone folder, cardstock, thumb, and we're just gonna gently curl those petals. I'm gonna do both of them, and see if I can show you the difference. Now I also like to, these look like sunglasses or like a bikini or something, doesn't it? I'm gonna kind of bend on either side of the bow loops. Just like that, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is take this tab and we're gonna glue it to the back. So let me, I like using liquid glue for this. So I'm just gonna do one side at a time. Now this might make me a liar here, but we'll see. We're gonna, I'm gonna make both of these so you can kind of see the difference in the way the fibers on the cardstock work. It's not the end of the world, but you'll notice a difference. And then this one. Just use those tabs to kind of line everything up. And already it's looking like an adorable little bow there. All right, so there's one. Let's do this one and show you the difference. It does look like a strapless bra, that's right. I think I already know which one's gonna be the winner, the first one. You're gonna kind of feel the cardstock fight you, and that's when you're gonna know. Do you already see what's happening with that cardstock? Um, the fibers are fighting with us on this one, so it's not giving me the really nice rounded edges like this one is. It's a minor difference, but you'll notice this was harder and you're kind of getting those harsh lines there. So this is gonna be the one that goes in the trash can. Create for the trash can, <laughs> that's a tip for you. But we're gonna start, we're gonna go with this one, okay? And that just means I think that the fibers are going long ways. I'm not even sure. I'm not a, not a paper scientist, even though I pretend to be, right? Um, and then we're gonna do our tails here. And I'm gonna show you the trick, or this is how I did it, because I wanted this to wrap around. So this is the front of our bow. You'll see we've got the little seam on the back. So that's the back. Ultimately, I want the tails to be coming from the back, okay? But this long piece, I wanna wrap around. So I'm just gonna kind of dry fit it but I also need this to tuck under. I hope that this is making sense. So I'm gonna kind of let this tail come out because otherwise it's gonna be in our way and then fold this around. So this is gonna end up being on the back side. Once you play with it, it's gonna be real easy to put together. But I'm gonna start with liquid glue, starting with the back side here. And just give it a few seconds to hold that into place. And then one more little bit of liquid glue here on the back. And then we can flip our tails around like so. Just gonna hold that into place. Hopefully that made sense. You kind of have to wrap it around in a weird way. Um, this was the best way to get this to look like a really sweet paper bow with the tails coming through from the back. Isn't that so cute? So that's in petal pink. I love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, so now on the front of our card, I'm just gonna take liquid glue with our stamped sentiment here and pop that down onto the front, sort of equidistant right to left and then about the same equidistant from the scalloped top there. I'm gonna put a dollop of glue there on the back of the bow. 
And then we're just going to pop that down to the lower right and hold that into place. Turn it just a little bit here. And then for the finishing touch, if I can find my hearts, my heart pearls, I found them. I'm gonna grab another one of these pearls. I don't see my take your pick tool, so I'm gonna grab contraband real quick. So we've got our heart. <laughs> you have better eyes than me. Just gonna pop, whoops, as I'm losing my heart. I'm trying to do this upside down, being silly here. Love these. You got um, sort of shiny, matte, and then pearl, but they're so cute, big and small hearts. Let's see, all right. And there is our little mini pocket envelope that we turned into a little mini note card. Isn't that cute? I love the way that that looks. Let's bring in the card that we made tonight as well. Love the Abigail Rose product suite. It is just a beautiful set of products and you can pair it with so many different other different products in the catalog. Those rustic metallic um, adhesive back dots that we lose, used last week from the He's the Man suite. That would look really beautiful with this as well. I love how the blender pen makes this look like uh, petal pink on that really quick and easy mini note card. No excuses to make a little mini note card. And you could also put a gift card in here with it. Just show you that as well. So you can do the note enclosure and a gift card in the same pocket, which is really, really sweet. And you have so much fun, again, just using a minimal amount of designer series paper, four and a quarter by five inches. This card will post to my blog at thepaperpixie.com slash tomorrow. <laughs> at thepaperpixie.com tomorrow. This will post on Friday. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the products I featured today, there is a link in the description next to the comment, shop this episode's products. You can check out products from the Abigail Rose suite and shop directly from that link. Why don't we go ahead and jump into some Q&A here? So let me go ahead and tee that up. You guys had some good questions when I was taking a peek at them. So thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to get a few. I'm just doing the letter Q, so we're going to get a few matches here. So hi, Nancy. Hello, Andrea and Cheryl. Any word on clearance rack refresh? Good question, Linda. I don't have an update on that. We do have the last chance sale that is coming on June 1st for the month of June. Those are the retiring products from the outgoing mini catalog. I don't know if there will also be a clearance rack refresh with that as well. So we just stay tuned until Stampin' Up! lets us know. Let's see, hi, Brad and Jackie. What green color, okay, so that was the question. Um, I, I will need to double check that in the supply list to see what other colors we can. Somebody answered Oh, they did, okay. What size magnets do you use with your die pockets? I use the five by seven magnet cards from Stampin' Storage. You can find those on my favorites page at thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. Can the colored inks be used to stamp on that ribbon? I believe so, Bonnie. I'm not sure if they're only using stays on on the um, ribbon. It's possible that's the case because I'm not sure with our water-based inks how those would do on the ribbon. But you never know, you can always give it a try. So if I have an answer to that, I will, I will get you back. Soft succulent and old olive. Soft succulent and old olive were the greens. Thank you. Hello, Christine. I see you do not have the sticker part of the stamp, the part where when you're stamping on the stamp. Does it stick better and longer with that part or without? Great question. I love this question because I have sort of a different, it's more of a personal answer. Um, historically, here in the South, our... Uh, red rubber stamps, the cling stamps, didn't used to stick very well with the stickers. So I literally am just in the habit of not adding the stickers to my stamp sets. They've since updated the adhesive on those and they're super sticky. 
I personally, um, I've mentioned before, I call myself sometimes a lazy stamper. I am like, when I get a new stamp set, I am ready to play with that stamp set. I don't feel like wasting my time putting the stickers on them. Cause to me, the stickers, I can do, you know, use them or not use them. So I just, I just store them in the stamp set. Let me show you um, what I do with my sticker sheet is I just stick it on the back side of the stamp set. I just slide it right in there because ultimately when this stamp set retires, I will sell it in my retired item sale. I just don't put the stickers on and that was more out of habit and um, wanting to get busy crafting and not putting stickers on there. So I do hang on to the stickers for whoever ultimately adds it to their perma stash from my retired item sale. They can always add the stickers if they want to. But again, it doesn't necessarily help me stamp because with the red rubber, you can't see through anyways, and you can't always get the stickers to line up exactly with the stamped image anyways. So I don't know, that's my long answer to that, but hopefully that was helpful. You used, you used an opening pro, let's, you used an opening program a couple weeks ago before you started. What is the name of the program, please? You, I think you might be asking about my countdown timer, maybe? Um, I use Ecamm Live. And I have a countdown timer um, that I purchased from Live Streaming Pros. That's what my countdown timer is at the beginning with all the fun rainbow bubbles. Um, I think that's what you're asking about. Where do you get your black magnet holder for your dies and will it fit the original plastic envelope the dies come in? Okay, so I order those from Amazon. They are called C-Line so C is in Charlie, C-Line shop ticket holders. They're five by eight, and I trim them down to seven and a quarter. They're a vinyl pocket, I think this is what you're talking about, that holds my magnet cards. These will not fit the, do you have one of the clear plastic? Oh yeah, one of those right next to you on the left. This. Yeah, those are, let me go ahead and come back here really quick. Those will not fit in the pocket. I'm just double checking that before I answer you. No, no, those will not fit. It's too tight of a fit. So actually what I do is um, I put my dies onto the five by seven magnet card from Stampin' Storage and put them in these C-Line shop ticket holders. These I store in a cabinet sort of out of the way for when I resell the dies. Okay, so good question. Let's come back to that. All right, will it fit a tea bag? Hmm. It is, the pocket itself, I wanna say is about two and three eighths wide, but you're gonna need something a little bit smaller than that. You could probably go down to two and a quarter, and I suppose it depends on the tea bag. There are some tea bags that are, I know, wider and probably too big for this. Brian's grabbing, <laughs> we have all kinds of stuff. Yeah, the, tea, the Tazo tea bags are gonna be too big. But great question on that. I'm, I'm showing it to you like you can see it, but you cannot. So yeah, that's a little bit too big for this pocket. But great question. Yes, I love that. To put a cute note in your kid's lunch, Kathy. Love that idea. Will the magnetic plate work in the Big Shot? It sure will. Yes, it will. We were using our Big Shot Expressor. I shouldn't say we, Brian was using the Big Shot Express a couple weeks ago to do a bunch of die cuts and it worked just great in that. How do I store my liquid glue? So I store it in this 3D printed, I think it's from Cujo 3D. I found it on Etsy. I just store my liquid glue upside down like that so it's always ready to go. Great question. Make sure I don't skip any. Are the standard stamp cases on page 149 the same size as the case the stamp and die sets come in? Um, Vicki, yes, the standard stamp cases are the same cases that the stamp sets come in, yes. Not the same as the, um, the die folders, um, but yes, the, the ones you can buy in a set of four are exactly the same as these. So when you get a broken case and Stampin' Up! sends you a replacement, that's what they're sending you is one of those clear stamp cases you can get in a set of four. Okay, would a business card fit? Thank you. Yes, a business card will fit. Cute, that's a cute way to give a business card. Love the suggestion, thanks for asking that. Okay, thank you. 
How long can you leave Versamark on your stamps? You know, Versamark, oh, I'm really bad about cleaning my stamps. Just ask my husband because he usually cleans a whole boatload of them at once because I move on to the next project. I'm a lazy and a messy stamper, I think. Um, and I've left Versamark on for a while. There, I don't. It's not like um, stays on or the stays on cleaner, which can break down your stamps ultimately. Um, but the Versamark, it's got a, I think it's got a glycerin or a similar glycerin base to it so that the embossing powder can stick. I don't think it'll damage your stamps. I haven't had any experience with it doing that. How do you mark the paper to remember which way the grain goes? You know what, Deanne? It's just one of those things that a little bit of trial and error. Again, it's not the end of the, it's not the end of the day. If that's, is that the right phrase? The the it's not the end of the world. Thank you. To have it go in the wrong direction. You'll just find that one way will go better than the other. And then I would probably just put a little pencil mark or something on the piece that I'm working with because each piece is ultimately gonna be different which direction. It is hard to look at the paper and figure out which way the grain goes just because from textures and things, etc. cetera, so. Um, you, can sit on this one. you can kind of see it, but it's like a... Well, it's not gonna be one for one it's, I mean it all depends you, how they you, cut it you get it all mashed up so it's gonna be yeah maybe you could just cut it on the angle and then it'll just catch it <laughs> whichever way um let's see where do you get your plastic thingy you had your pearls in so that is also on my favorites page it is actually an Avery passport holder and I think you can get them in a package of 10 I was tired of um all of our adhesive backed embellishments are all different sizes. And from a storage perspective, it's a little bit of a nightmare to store. So the crafty OCD in me, um, I was looking for a solution and I absolutely love the four by six Avery passport pockets. Um, they're great. And then you can obviously, you know, reuse them. And this is what she's asking about. I've just got, and usually I have them labeled. I haven't labeled these yet, but I just take the backing of our designer series paper the 12 by 12 backing and I cut it down to four by six pieces just reusing it because otherwise it just goes in the recycling bin and then I just adhere the clear plastic that the embellishments come on with some stamp and seal plus and that's how I store my embellishments so then that way they're all the same size and I've got I have an old sort of retired let me come back to this really quick an old retired stamp and storage container but all of my adhesive backed embellishments are all uniform and they're easy to flip through i love this storage solution it's one of my favorites great question where do you get the packets oh i just answered that awesome so mary and marcella you both had the same question there are the pearl hearts in the new annual they are ananda let me tell you which page they're on thank you They're sort of a hidden, of course, I, all right, they're on page 143. Let me come back to my overhead camera here. So they're up here in the upper right corner on page 143. They're the heart pearls. They're $8. You get 180 adhesive backed pieces in three different colors, milky white, glossy white, and pearl white. So I love that. We were using the pearl white one tonight. So again, page 143. Oh, good. Good question. What do you use to make your labels? Donna, I use the Brother P-Touch Cube Plus, I believe is what it's called. It's a black cube. Let me come back. You're looking at my mess on my table. It's a black cube printer. Um, I do have that linked on my favorites page as well. It's Bluetooth. You can put um, different widths of tape in there. And it has a computer program called the Brother P Touch Label. Brother P Touch Editor, I think is what it's called. I love it because I'll use that to label my die sets because I do the one inch or it's 0.94 inch um, labels, but it allows me to put some additional things on there. I'm going to show you when it has a coordinating stamp set. I put the name, the item number, the number of dies, and then the stamp set that it coordinates with. That is very helpful for me when I'm going through my things. And then ultimately I will put a label on the stamp set that says which dies the stamp set it the stamp set coordinates with. But yeah, it's the Brother P 
Brother P-Touch Cube Plus, I think. It's a little cube, black cube, it's Bluetooth. I personally think well worth the money. I think it's around $100. How do you spiral bound your catalog? So I actually have a coil, a coil binding machine. I bought the electric one. Don't waste your money on the electric because it's really easy once you've got the pages punched. Um, I do have that linked on my favorites page as well, but if you're only spiral binding maybe one or two catalogs a year, just take it to FedEx Kinko's and have them do it. I have heard that some staples are saying no because of the adhesive on, they've got to cut the binding first before they punch the spiral holes or the coil binding holes. And some of them I've heard across the country are pushing back saying, no, we won't do that because the adhesive gunks up the machine. I've always had great success at FedEx Kinko's and it's anywhere from like five to $8 to do that. I just put, um, the clear window sheet or acetate sheets on the front and the back and coil bind it. But I do have it linked on my favorites page if you want to check it out. Um, don't waste your money in the electric one. The only challenge is you're going to need to have something that will cut off the binding. Um, I have an industrial paper cutter because I cut so much paper, but it might be just worth it to just take it to professionals to get it done. But again, about five to eight dollars. So good question. What do I do if the latch on one of my punches broke? It flew off when I was punching and I couldn't find the little lock piece. Is there a way to fix them? If you can't find the lock piece, Jennifer, um, reach out to Stampin' Up to see if they might have an extra one they can send you. Sometimes they have like the feet for the Stamparatus or the Simply Scored. They can send you those in the mail. They may have extra punch latches for you if you can't find yours. There is a way to do it, but it's been a long time since I've had to do that. So I bet there's probably a YouTube tutorial out there for that. But definitely give Stampin' Up! a call and see if they can help you out with that. Can you please remind me of what program you use to keep track of your inventory? Kathy, I use Airtable, A-I-R-T-A-B-L-E. If you go to my blog, thepaperpixie.com, in the little magnifying glass in the upper right corner, click that, type in the word Airtable, and you can see a link to my blog post about it, as well as my video tutorial, and there's also a link to a sample database that you can get from me for free to sort of help you get started. It's got the same columns and things that I use. Airtable is free. If you wanna start doing color coding and other things, you do have to pay, but it's, I wanna say it's around 100 bucks a year if you end up using Airtable for a lot of other things. But the free version should work just fine for inventory. Um, but I love it, it's a great way um, to keep track of what I have and search for sentiments and stuff like that. So good questions tonight. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the show up tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, if you're interested in purchasing any of the Abigail Rose products and other products that I use tonight, there is a link in the description that will take you to an add to cart page. You can pick and choose which items you'd like to purchase. I will be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode... 242 if I'm doing that right. I'd love to have you join me again. Thank you so much for joining me tonight and to those of you watching the replay. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week and I will see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.